Did you know I'm utterly insane? Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie serial killers who were based on real life killers. That's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife. Mario. You just get to Mario. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. For this list, we're looking at movie characters that were based on or inspired by actual killers in the real world. Which of these stories do you find the most chilling? Be sure to let us know about it in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 10, Don Burnside, the Clove Hitch Killer. Dad. What are you doing here? This thriller drama follows Tyler Burnside, a 16-year-old Christian in Kentucky who suspects that his father is a serial killer with a specific obsession. His father, Don Burnside, played by Dylan McDermott, is a devout family man who's active in the local community. You can't control what pops into your head, right? I mean, what if a thought popped into your head right now? A bad thought, something like, I don't know, you know, grabbing one of these, these tools in here and wham! He is loosely based on Dennis Rader, also known as BTK, Raider was active in Kansas from 1974 to 1991, killing 10 people. Like Don, BTK was prominent in the local church community and also served as a Cub Scout leader. He was hiding in plain sight and wasn't arrested until 2005, over 30 years after his killing spree began in 74. I'm not mad. Just disappointed. Number 9. Kit and Holly, Badlands Serving as Terrence Malick's directorial debut, Badlands stars Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek as 25-year-old Kit Carruthers and 15-year-old Holly Sargas. Holly falls for Kit, and the two move to the titular Badlands of Montana, where they commit various crimes. We're going to take the Cadillac for a while, how'd that be? Fine. Uh, don't worry, I won't let her drive. Oh, and uh, here, uh, here's a list of everything I borrowed. Car's on there, too. Okay, ma'am, let's go. Out that way. The story is very loosely based on the crime spree of Charles Starkweather and Carol Ann Fugate in the late 1950s. Just as Kit kills Holly's father, so did Charles murder Carol's stepfather. Kit! Kit! Hey, where are you going? <laughs> However, other details are quite different. For example, Charles also killed Carol's mother and young sister. He was actually 19 and Carol 14, and their crime spree occurred in Nebraska and Wyoming. Furthermore, Carol was actually sentenced to life in prison, whereas in the film, Holly receives probation. You're quite an individual, kid. Think I'll take that into consideration? Number 8. Mick Taylor, Wolf Creek. What do you actually do? Now. Oh, I can tell you, but then I'm gonna have to kill you. This sadistic film follows three friends backpacking across Australia when they're accosted by local man Mick Taylor in Wolf Creek National Park. Like your little mate said before, you know, that's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife. Mick stalks the group before tormenting and killing two of them, while the third escapes. Writer-director Greg McLean based the story on the backpacker murders that occurred in New South Wales, Australia from 1989 to 1993. The man responsible, Ivan Milat, killed seven travellers before his arrest. The story also draws on the story of another Australian killer, Bradley John Murdoch, who, in 2001, murdered British backpacker Peter Falconio. Like Ben in Wolf Creek, Falconio's girlfriend, Joanne Lees, managed to escape into the bush. Where do you live? <laughs> oh, I get around, you know. Never know where I might pop up. <laughs> <laughs> Number 7. Andre Chikatilo, Citizen X This HBO show from the 90s stars Stephen Ray and Donald Sutherland as two Soviet detectives hunting down a serial killer responsible for over 50 murders. A man is what he fights for. Well, I don't fight for anything. I know. The man is Andre Chikatilo, a real serial killer who was convicted for 52 murders from 1978 to 1990. The movie 
studiously keeps to reality, including the real names of those involved and the number of murders committed. The movie even gets the smaller details right, like the fact that Chikatilo was arrested by plainclothes police officers and that he broke down, cried, and admitted his crimes during a psychological profile conducted by Alexander Bukhanovsky. It is the last, is it not? <laughs> you believe the police might see your image in their eyes. Number 6. John Christie, 10 Rillington Place This British crime drama stars Richard Attenborough as John Christie, a serial killer who murders people in his London flat and hides the corpses inside. No, Muriel. No, no, no. no. Breathe, Muriel. Another resident of 10 Rillington, Timothy Evans, is erroneously found guilty and sentenced to death for the murders of his wife and daughter. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Amen. When it comes to serial killer films, they don't get much more accurate than 10 Rillington Place. Much of the plot remains true to life, including the method of Christie's murders, the execution of Timothy Evans in 1950, and the fact that three bodies were found in the walls shortly after Christie moved out. Cliff. Go and get the police. Even some of the exterior shots were filmed at the real 10 Rillington Place, including those of Attenborough using the front door. Number 5. Patrick Bateman, American Psycho It's quite the combo. Patrick Bateman is a hotshot Wall Street banker and serial killer. So what do you do? I'm into uh, well, murders and executions mostly. Do you like it? Well, it depends. Why? Well, most guys I know who work in mergers and acquisitions really don't like it. While Leonardo DiCaprio, Edward Norton, Keanu Reeves, and Brad Pitt were considered for the role, it eventually went to Christian Bale and has since become one of his signature performances. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? While Bateman doesn't have a direct real-world counterpart, author Brett Easton Ellis was reportedly influenced by the story of Ted Bundy, a similarly good-looking and charismatic man who killed at least 30 people throughout the 1970s. Bundy was not an investment banker, but his looks, personality, deceptive tricks, and methods have similarities to Bateman. I think if you stay, something bad will happen. I think I might hurt you. You don't want to get hurt, do you? Number 4. Scorpio, Dirty Harry Don't pass out on me yet. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. Don't pass out on me yet, you rotten oinker. One of Clint Eastwood's most popular movies, Dirty Harry sees Inspector Harry Callahan hunting down a murderer by the name of Scorpio. Scorpio shoots innocent people with a sniper rifle and keeps in contact with the San Francisco Police Department, often demanding blackmail and ransom money. Uh, Double-crossing San Francisco Police made me do this. Now ransom 200000 and used tens and twenties. Scorpio was very loosely based on the Zodiac Killer, a still unidentified man who killed at least five people around the greater San Francisco area in the late 1960s. The Zodiac himself claims to have killed 37, but this is unconfirmed. While the Zodiac never used a sniper rifle, he did stay in contact with the police and the press throughout his crime spree, often taunting them with letters and cryptograms. The case remains open to this day. I'm not the Zodiac. And if I was, I certainly wouldn't tell you. Number 3. Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! One of the most iconic slasher films of all time, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre stars Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface, a psychotic serial killer in rural Texas. And while the movie is entirely fictional, various aspects of Leatherface were inspired by murderer and grave robber Ed Gein. Gein never used a chainsaw, and his crimes were committed in Wisconsin, not Texas. But like Leatherface, he exhumed corpses from graveyards, decorated his house with bones, and wore masks made from skin. He also murdered two women in the mid-50s, leading to his lifelong institutionalization at Wisconsin's Mendota Mental Health Institute. Number 2. Hannibal Lecter, The Silence of the Lambs Good morning. Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter gets less than 20 minutes of screen time in this film, but boy does he own it. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. 
author Thomas Harris reportedly based the character on a physician named Alfredo Bailly Trevino. Harris met Trevino while writing a piece for Argosy magazine and based Hannibal's traits on the prison doctor, including his, quote, certain elegance, pensions for, quote, standing very still, and his, quote, peculiar understanding of the criminal mind. What is its nature? What does he do, this man you see? No, that is incidental. Trevino was serving life for murdering and cutting up his boyfriend. And he was also suspected of killing several hitchhikers in the 50s and 60s. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Norman Bates, Psycho Anthony Perkins gave one of the all-time great movie performances as Norman Bates. Do you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Widely regarded as one of the best characters in film history, Norman is the psychotic proprietor of the Bates Motel, who likes to dress up as his deceased mother and kill the motel's occupants. <laughs> Like Leatherface, Norman Bates was partly modeled after Ed Gein. Gein was very close with his mother, and her death in 1945 may have contributed to Gein's insanity. Years later, Gein began exhuming corpses of women who resembled his mother, and attempted to craft a suit so he could literally become her. Sound familiar? <laughs> Ed Gein actually served as the inspiration for many fictional serial killers, including Norman Bates, as we mentioned, uh, Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs, uh, The House of a Thousand Corpses and its sequel, Leatherface from The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Dr. Threatson from American Horror Story Asylum. Really scary stuff. Anyway, be sure to let us know in the comments if you know of any other real-life serial killers that inspired movies. See ya!